A very good morning to you and welcome to another week of broadcast, starting with Afia Morning Show with you live from Enugu State, Nigeria. I hope you had a really relaxing and enjoyable weekend. I know some of you attended events, visited loved ones, but most importantly, I do hope that you are able to catch up with the live broadcast of Afia Radio 99.3 FM. We're going to be talking about it later on the show, but first, let's take the news updates. Stay with us. We'll begin with Anambra State. Anambra State Governor Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo has called on the federal government to consider rehabilitating federal roads in his state for easy movement of vehicles, especially as the Yuletide season approaches. Moving on, the Association of Buru de Change Operators of Nigeria has urged the Central Bank of Nigeria to digitize and democratize its operations to halt the foreign exchange crisis. On the national scene, President Bola Tinubu in Delhi, India, held bilateral talks with the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, the President of South Korea, Yoon suk yeol and the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, on the sidelines of the G20 summit, identifying these three heads of state as key partners in his economic development diplomacy drive for local investment and wealth creation. On the foreign scene, Niger's junta has accused France of deploying troops in several West African countries as part of preparations for a possible military intervention together with the regional bloc ECOWAS in Niger. And in sports, Victor Oshiman scored a hat trick as Nigeria turned up in style, thrashing Sao Tome and Principe 6 0 at the Godzilla Pabio Stadium, Uyo, on Sunday. And that is all we have for you on the news update, but you can guess that there's so much more to come your way. Stay with us. You're yeah, welcome back to the show. If you're just joining us, good morning to you. I'm Natalie Uku, and like you know, I'm never here by myself. I do have my amazing co host, Oji Wajiku, and welcome to the morning show this morning. Monday morning definitely is going to be an awesome week, by the way, because um, I hope you rested and um, uh, you're ready to get it on and get back and hustle and make ends meet. And then we state, make sure you come out today, Monday. Don't sit at home. Come out. The security agencies and apparatus are sort of all the way, you know, getting to here. So make sure you do come out and hustle because definitely you need it and boom our economy and revenue in Enugu State. By the way, let me give you some mention of who we're going to be having on the show today. The rundown, by the way. We'll always get to the around the region where our, our bureau chief, uh, Emmanuel Wazoo, will be in Enugu State to ascertain the expectations of the 2024 budget, right? And also the people's polls, you know, regards that budget and their expectations, by the way. And also, we're going to go to Emo State. Yeah, the vote apathy is the order of the day in Emo State. We're going to be having all that conversation on how prepared the Emo State election agencies are and how prepared people are to go out and vote. You know, 99.3 Afia Radio is on and we launch during the weekend. Yeah, we're going to be having a conversation on how businesses are going to be, you know, somehow surmounted in Enugu State and in the Southeast, and also relating it to in focus, Afia 99.3 FM. I'm going to have that conversation with the manager programs, 99.3 Radio, Enugu State. Something that always bothers us in Enugu State is drug abuse. Our youths are delving into drugs and do a lot of drugs, and we're going to be having that conversation too right here on the show. But before we get off at the tail end of the show, we all give you the Afia recommendations and the tip for the day. All these and more on the Afia Morning Show. But right about now, first, we give you the newspaper review. I mean, now. there's absolutely no reason for you to leave your seat or even to touch that dial this morning. But we also should remember that today is a rather sad day. It is September. 2023 it is also 9 11 and it reminds us of people that lost their lives at the world trade center mm. the pentagon and even the four planes that were used to crash into those buildings by the terrorists it's a really sad one and every 9 11 we always remember them and pray that their families are still able to bear the loss and that they rest in peace it's very important that we remember this every 9 11 and to ensure that security agencies across the world stay on top of their game but we have to just move on to who we also have in the studio barista chidi ujo atumba of ujo atumba and company limited joining us for the news bar review today good morning good, good morning, morning natalie good morning. and mr oji thank you happy new week yeah. i'm glad to be here once again 
I think we can call you our pop hacked barista <laughs> at this point in time because you have to always ask the question on what grounds on what are they going grounds? to be doing this? So many grounds. Yeah. But speaking of grounds, we're going to also delve back into matters at the tribunal. We'll start off with the Daily Times. And one at the front and center reads huge row over demolition of former First Lady's one, B, 1 billion Naira Plaza. NGX investors' wealth grew by 337 billion Naira in one week. Another CBN deputy governor arrested. Okay, moving on to um, Nigerian News Direct this morning. North East suffers $9 billion dollars damage due to Boko Haram attacks. VP um, Shetima says that governors um, urge military to neutralize insurgents that fail to surrender. States get 15 billion naira palliatives. And on daily trust, uncertainty over electric vehicles take off in Nigeria. That seems to be the only one at the front and center. Okay, moving on to our blueprints. Traditional rulers collaborating with bandits to risk sanction Northeast governors. Government kill women, adopt police officer's wife, daughter in Taraba State. You can catch it on page um, six of the blueprint. And on Daily Sun, Tinubu Atiku legal battle shifts to U.S. Court hears Chicago University case tomorrow. U.S. President Joe Biden taking selfie with Director General World Trade Organization Dr. Ungozi Okonjo Iwala on the sideline of the G20 summit in India last weekend. A really nice shot there. 24 dead, 30 rescued in Niger boat mishap. Insecurity, Catholic bishops task governors on arms proliferation, demand cuts in cost of governance. Okay, nature news. Stakeholders be mourn um, G20 summit's failure to heed calls to phase out fossil fuels as summit ends without bold fossil fuel phase out proposals. And on the leadership, they delved straight into matters at the tribunal and the aftermath at leadership Twitter spaces. Stakeholders absolve judges, blame 9th NAS for Atiku Obi's loss at tribunal. Riders say electoral act drafted to provide escape rights for manipulators, don't transfer anger to judges, says ex PP advisor. Verdict reaffirms confidence in judiciary, credited to APC ex senators. Police arrest six suspects over Rivers DPO's murder. Federal government secures $163 million AFDB loan for wheat production. Organ harvest suspect goes berserk in police cell. Moving on to um, this Nigeria. Tragic boat mishap claims 26 lives in Niger. Uh, Niger, so um, Net Sema Rescue 30 says over 100 um, persons aboard ill fated boats as rescue operations continue. But she sound policies to support economic stability. IMF urges Nigerian orders. Um, subsidy Serap gives 36 governors seven days to disclose spending of two billion naira palliatives in Ogun State. Controversy trails alleged demolition of Daniel's wife, Ijebu Ude Shopping Mall. V um, more on, on the morning newspaper review papers, news directs, blueprints, nature news, and this Nigeria. And for more on those, you gotta grab copies of the Daily Trust, the Sun, Daily Times, and certainly leadership. And I was starting off with this one on leadership at Leadership Twitter Spaces. Stakeholders absolve judges, blame ninth NAS for Atigo Obi's loss at the tribunal. So on many Twitter spaces, they've asked Nigerians to blame the lawmakers for the gaps in the electoral act that gave room for election riggers to go ahead and rig the election. And remember that you cited earlier that we should call for some kind of amendment yes. as opposed to basically just blaming the judges because they acted based on the provisions of the law. Yes. So I would like to know your reaction to the lawmakers being blamed or asked to be blamed as opposed to the judges. Your reaction? Okay. Um, the legislators make the law and the executive implement the law. Now, when there is a dispute, we now bring in the judiciary to interpret the law. It's good for us to point out that there are gaps both in the constitution and also in the, in the electoral law that governs the election and there are so many gaps, it needs to be overhauled. But what I'm saying is that the, the legislation we have now is also good, okay? The, Interpreters of the law should always put into consideration the intentions of the draft makers. 
they always have an intention when they are drafting the law. The, 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 the interpreters of the law, the judges, should not try to or put in something that is not there. Neither would they try to phantom something out of their own imagination. They should give direct interpretation of the law in accordance with the intentions of the draft makers. With the intentions of the draft makers. Let me, let me, let me, let me give you an instance. You must be, uh, the, the constitution said that before you be announced to become a president in Nigeria, that you will score 20 5% of all the votes cast in all the states and Abuja. And Abuja. Now, section 299 refers Abuja as a state. But Abuja does not have a governor. Neither does Abuja have a three senatorial district. The, the, the Abuja could be termed as a state in one aspect of the constitution. Does not make Abuja a state when it comes to election. Have you seen? There's a whole lot of gap there. They should. Barista Chidi, I'd like to interject there. You know, you also said something about the other clause or manual upload or disbursement yes. of the results. Yes. Now, for this particular one, they're also laying emphasis on the inability of INEC to transmit the results to IREV because that was something that INEC held on to yes. and said that they, that it was basically only in the electoral act but not in the constitution. Yes. So why would they, the lawmakers pass or you know allow an electoral act that does not basically allow that allows for such discrepancies or loopholes to be used for an election now it appeared so futile for the opposition parties to actually ask for the the, the judges to look into that because there were too many loopholes if it wasn't stated in the constitution that the result had to be uploaded to the irf but it was only in the electoral act and that was what the the tribunal said why was an election allowed to be conducted when such a gap was there? That is the question and, I have. And billions were spent. If you look at the billions that were spent to acquire the beaver, the iron, the technology, the billions entire of technology Naira. to transmit. You look at the billions that were spent. You now sit back and ask yourself, why would we toy with this amount of money and also the destiny of Nigeria at the same time? I am in all fours with you. The INEC amendment was done in a hurry. It was passed into law by the by President Muhammad Buhari, it was done in a hurry. They didn't really look into it. Even the um, the electoral law itself is faulted with so many gaps, not to talk of the constitution. The position of the constitution when it comes to organizing presidential elections, there's a whole lot of gap in it. So I think they have to bring the constitution together with the electoral law, pinpoint all those gaps, and then quietly make an amendment that will enable the next election to be free and fair. Because let me tell you what's going to happen. The gaps we have found out in this current election, the 2023 election, it will not go well with the next election that is coming up in Nigeria. Because there's a whole lot of electoral gaps that need to be plunged. Once they have closed those gaps, you cannot sit back and ensure that there will be, um, that the law have provided for, have created the enabling environment for a free and a fair election. Let me tell you what INEC did. INEC will, should not be uh, totally uh, set free here because INEC went on the media houses in the whole nation conducting interview. If you watch, you will find out that there was, there was no more vote, voter apathy. Because people actually came out to vote in February 2023. People came out to vote because people wanted a change. People wanted something new. So they came out and voted. Why? Because they are of the opinion that they IRF issue and all the technology that has been imported because of the amendment that was done in the electoral law will showcase and also give us a transparent electoral result. But we didn't see that. Chidi, can we, we call it that. an electoral fallacy? At it's an electoral time. fraud. It's an electoral fraud. INEC duped the whole nation. INEC should be proved. Those who were involved in this should go to prison. Look, INEC should be proved. The modern Nigeria was modern. <laughs> Nigeria was finished. Everything. Look, look at what's happening in Yemo State now. People are finding it difficult. The, 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 the most sacrosanct, important thing about election is voting and your vote counting. Voting and your vote counting. It's waking up early with your PVC, going out there to stand for accreditation, stand because you know that you want your 
future to be better. You want the future of your children to be better. You want policies that will be passed that will make education, agriculture, create employment. Nigeria is going down. We should not desecrate the temple of election. We, it has been desecrated a lot by INEC. INEC should be held responsible. INEC should be made to pay. They should serve as a deterrent to any other body or any other person that will come and toy with the hope of the masses. With the hope of the masses. The masses hope we are toy. This election turned Nigeria upside down, and the judiciary did not uh, help matters. They, they nailed the coffin. The judiciary came out mm -hmm. and used the hammer and nailed the coffin, capitalized on the gap, and gave a judgment that, in my opinion, that is devoid of the slightest merit. It's devoid of the slightest merit. I must have to say that. It's very funny that at this point in time, nobody is calling out our necks. Like, they are going squad free, you know perpetrating all of these um, um, evils and nobody's calling them out. When the people yeah. in the government, are allegedly the people that mobilize INEC to commit this kind of fraud, who will call INEC out? Who will call INEC out? Is it the IGP? Who, who, no, tell me, who in position of political authority can take a phone and call INEC out and heads will start rolling? Who can do that? Is it President Tinubu? that we are alleging that he himself bought the INEC over. So tell me, who will call INEC out? Is it the IGP that was appointed by the president? I told you, I've, I've said it over and over again. When a fish is rotten in the head, there is absolutely nothing that you can do with the rest of the body. We need to sanctify the electoral temple of this nation before we can get pure rulers that are, you know, moved by the issues that touches the masses. The people are suffering. The people are suffering. I, I, another, another, another rider there goes on, on, on security. If you yes, watch, I'm you can bring you to that. Yeah. You're, going, you're going to find out that there's a whole report coming out now in security all over the nation. Security. If you remember last three weeks when the service chiefs were appointed, yeah. they stood on a solid ground and they made white elephant promises that they will do this and they will do that. Akinas Look at what is happening in north in the northeast now. Yeah. Look at what's happening in the southeast. Look at what's happening in Abuja. The minister of FCT is complaining that there is no week that goes on without a pocket of either theft or kidnapping or banditry activity in the federal capital territory, Abuja. Let me, let me bring it to this, right? Bring it up. Um, um, Blueprint says here, traditional rulers collaborating with bandits risk sanctions. If there's this such intel that something fishy is happening here, why is DSS not swinging in action? It's not something fishy. Go and read newspapers starting from 2021. Tradition. Where are the bandits? Where are the bandits? They are in the creeks, they are in the forest, they are in the bush. Every land in this Nigeria belongs to a particular community that has a traditional ruler, that knows what is happening there. They have been collaborating, they have been taking some part of the ransom that have been paid. They have their own court. I am alleging that, yes, they have their own court because over a long period of time, this menace have not been curbed because there are people in either political or traditional or local authorities having information, seeing but not talking, seeing but not talking, participating in this thing. And it keeps on going on and on and on. How many paramilitary police and force people have lost their life in the fight against Boko Haram in the fight? Nine billion Naira, did you read that right there? Nine, the North East have lost nine billion dollars to Boko Haram. And Boko Haram insurgency is not yet over. It's not yet over. It's good for our president to go around the nation and you know get promises from India and all the rest of them. Germany promised to help us with technology to fight terrorism during the live G summit uh, meeting they're having in, in India. There's a whole lot of promises coming there. But we want these G20 promises to come home, materialize into soft and tangible principles and policies that will make the life of individuals better. We are tired of reading them in the newspaper. They are lovely prints. I love the character in the newspaper. But let them come down here in Nigeria, in the local government. Let those policies be brought down to A, B, C, and D. And let it be done with immediate alacrity and automatic Marta celerity. Chidi. Yeah. Yes, I mean, those are punchlines, I have to say. But talking about the Supreme Court, chances of Atiku and Obi at the Supreme Court, you said that some of these people that perpetrate crimes live among us. They are, I mean, they're people, people that we see every day, yeah, right? They're, they're, yeah. Now, the same lawmakers at the Court of Appeal are also, they're also lawmakers at the Supreme Court. So what are the chances of Atiku and Obi 
at the Supreme Court, would you say that it is worth going to appeal the judgment of the tribunal at the Supreme Court? Your thoughts? It, it, it is worth taking that matter to the Supreme Court. And if there is a process of appealing to heaven, if the Supreme Court does not do, do the needful, let us go ahead and appeal to heaven. The justice, you, you cannot... You cannot take away the principles of justice. When you take away that which makes justice justice, okay? The, the, what you leave out there, it's, no, it's nothing. It's nothing. You may not be alone. You don't need... Look, go, go, go on the street and conduct interview on people's expectation on this judgment. They are not lawyers. Forget about law interpretation and law whatever here. These are not lawyers. People, international observers gave a report, okay? So a lot happened. I believe that if they can culminate all this thing and... File an appeal at the Supreme Court. The justices of the Supreme Court, yes, they are justices of the Supreme Court. Their decision is final. And let me tell you why I'm saying that they have a chance, okay? In the Supreme Court, there is a precedent on 25%, okay? So the people that gave that judgment, they are justices of the Supreme Court. That is the court of highest jurisdiction in Nigeria. In the issue of double nomination, there is a Supreme Court precedent that is currently going on right now. So it's Supreme Court that gave that decision. The court of appeal served as, um, as, a, as, as, a, as a petition panel here. They are the hearing uh, body that looked at the evidence. So there's an opportunity for other higher bench to look into the meaning that they gave to these constitutional provisions and the attachment they gave. You can imagine uh, LP uh, brought uh, how many witnesses, 13 witnesses, but 10 out of those 13 witnesses we are right struck down. out yeah. on the grounds of technicalities. We cannot continue to murder democracy technicalities. on the grounds of technicalities. No, there are ways to do it. There are ways. Yes, yes, I, 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 I agree with you. Courts, yeah. I agree with you that um, election petition is too generous, okay? It's too generous. You, whatever you are saying, if you are saying jack, you must prove it. The color, the time, everything. You don't just come there and talk nonsense. <laughs> In election petition, it's too, you must prove what you're coming. But law interpretation should be done with the intent of the lawmakers, with the intent of the, not based on what technical is, with the intent of the lawmakers. Thank you so Thank much, you. Yeah. Thank Chidi, you for much, all yeah. the analysis. And, of course, joining us on the review today, lots of insights, and, of course, for sharing your opinion on tribunal-related issues and the security. I mean, we have to throw it to you at this point. Electoral act or electoral fallacy? Let us know what you think about this assertion on Twitter at Abia TV official. We'll go on a quick break, and when we return, we'll be catching up with our correspondents in Abia and Imo State. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. You're still watching Afia Morning Show. And right about now, we'll be heading to Abia State, where our state borough chief, Emmanuel Wazwe, has details of people's expectations from the 2024 budget and what they expect the government to do for them. Emmanuel, good morning. A very good morning to you, Natalie. Are you ready for the brand new week? A very much ready. We are so vibrant here. And we are kicking up with the people's expectations. You know, it's one thing to prepare the budget, the state budget. It is another also to have the people's wishes also incorporated into this particular budget. Otherwise, it wouldn't be seen to be uh, the people's document. So I went out there to ask Abians exactly what they want you know, the government to impute in this particular budget to make it their own document. And you, you see, they were actually talking about one particular area, water, road, health. And all my, correspond all my respondents almost said the same thing, uh, talking about the health sector, uh, the road infrastructure, of course, water supply. Please take a listen. As we earlier reported, the budgeting plans for the years 2024 to 2026 have begun in Abia State. And if the state's financial plans for the years in view must be seen as people-oriented, then they must reflect the people's needs. What are these needs for Abians? This was the question we posed to the people themselves. Water, which is water for everybody um, basically, we have therapy health in Zimbabwe. Uh, by the virtue of my work, I've been able to tour around Abia, at least major local governments in Abia. And I find out that one of the problems they have is the issue of 
uh, potable water. Say something in the rural room. The rural Indians are really suffering. Now, from here to Ikorano, it's no less than six, seven hundred naira just from Mubike Junction to that place because some part of the road is bad. And now, taking bike from there, something like uh, you're going to Amabime, or you're going to Amabikutu, or you're going to Ariamelu, Ariamadala, Ebiri, or some, those areas you spend more. You can even spend up to 800, 900, or even 1,000 naira in the same Abia. I'm talking about from one here to those areas. So, what I'm telling the government to do is to focus on rural roads. We are not, we are not uh, politicians about it. Let them fix the rural roads. It's very important to us. And also, give them water. If you can give a man portable, portable water to drink and give him good news, then let me, the electricity will follow. Number one, good. This is number one thing. For him to help out and take the water. The water. And second, health. Water and growth and life. Food. And both. And mechanic place. And then we go to that place. Good, that place. And water too. From artisans to professionals, their wishes appear the same. Portable water, road infrastructure, electricity, and access to quality health care. Although the Alex Oti-led administration has embarked on some road projects as well as touching the health sector, with the state-owned specialist hospital receiving a first lift, Abians are asking for more, and water they say is life. Just as electricity will make life even better. Emmanuel Wazwe reporting. Road infrastructure is so important, especially as the Yuletide season is almost upon us. It's really important, and I do hope that the government takes a listen to the pleas of the people and focuses on the roads, the water, and electricity. We can't have Christmas without those mm. now, can we? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, roads, accessible road, uh, quality roads, uh, quality water, you know, and uh, electricity. These are very, very important things during the Yuletide period, right? And it's good that people are asking. And the, the governor and the government is actually working and trying to, you know, put all these things in place. You just have to give him time because governance is not easy. It, it takes time, right? But the main thing is that you're seeing that he's doing something. He's implementing these policies and already. So just probably just have patience and, 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 and hope that definitely in a in, in few months and years to come, right? Let me just say, year two, Abians will start, you know, reaping the real dividends of democracy. Yes. And Emmanuel, are you with us? Emmanuel. Yes, very much, yeah. I'd like to know your reaction to Abia State Governor being referred to as an action man by lots of people in the Southeast. Is well, he really he an is, action man? Well, he is just a uh, hun barely uh, hundred, uh, uh, a few days away from 100 years, let's just say 100 days, you know, in office. And uh, to me, I will also ask people to uh, please you know, take it uh, softly because uh, it is not yet Uhuru. So we should know. And uh, of course, what he has done so far uh, is very much commendable from, you know, uh, keen observers. But then, I, you know, um, just as human beings are dynamic, there is also that particular room for the government, and this is why we shouldn't uh, all out go out with our trumpets at this moment. There should be that level of checkmating. So, so far, so good. He is doing well. But we do not need to blow it out of proportion so that he remains focused on what he is doing. After all, it's just a few days away from 100 days. I will throw this question to you and Oji as well. Now, there are two leadership styles I would like us to focus on, sprinting and running a marathon race. Between sprinting and running a marathon, which leadership style would you say is better? For sprinting, we're talking about doing everything very fast at the beginning and then slowing down towards the end. For a marathon, we're talking about taking everything in stride, in gear, all the way till the end of the administration. Which one do you think would assist the Southeast the most? Let's start with you, Emmanuel. Well, slow and steady, they say, wins the race. I prefer slow and steady. That's um, a marathon, you know. Take it little by little, and in this way, you will be able to recognize uh, the faces cheering you. It's printing, you hardly can hear or see those cheering you, by the way. So, uh, I, I go for marathon. Well, All right, Oji. 
Let, the truth is that if you just pose both, right, um, it all depends on implementations. If you're sprinting and you are fast hitting to the, the effects of people, right, <laughs> I don't see any problem with that. If you can finish up probably, let me say, half or uh, thereabout of your, your, your manifesto, within your four, sorry, your three years, even before leading to the next election, fine. The main thing is that you're working, there's something happening, right? If, if you keep doing these things and it's happening and people are seeing it, nobody's gonna complain. If you wanna do slow and steady, like you're very lackadaisical and sometimes you're, you're trying to put in work, you're relaxed and all that, fine too. But the main thing is that people are seeing these implementations of your policies and all that. And if you want to sprint, but we're seeing that everything is working, fine. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't, you know, weighing these two things, it, it doesn't matter. The main thing is that implementations of your policies, your, your manifestos are going on. All right. Emmanuel, your reaction to that? Are you still with us? <laughs> uh, yes, I'm very much here. Uh, uh, um, when you talk about uh, marathon, you know, taking it slow and steady, it doesn't mean all of these encompass these uh, uh, implementations. So, but the more people see you take one thing after another. You see, one of the reasons uh, why people think that the previous administration in the United States actually failed was some kind of sprint. There were uh, so many uh, projects, you know, uh, taken together by the past uh, government that, was, that you know, were not completed. As, 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 even as we speak at this moment. One of them also, um, the um, Enimba, uh, Enimba Economic City. So ask me where Enimba Economic City is at the moment. It is to be completed, okay? And so many more that, like that. But if you are consistent with what you're doing, go another, implement this report to another. People are saying that you're working. They will also take it if they criticize you, and that is it. So it's all about implementation. Just like uh, we were talking about budget, uh, the uh, Commission for Budget and Economic Planning said that only 17% of the last year's budget was, you know, uh, achieved. Out of 100%, you achieved 17%. It's even below, uh, you know, uh, average, if we have to talk about. So, uh, that's the of uh, sprint, if you ask me. But if you take things the way they should be, um, making sure that you pick up this particular yes, it is implemented the letter and spirit of anything instituting it. And people will applaud you. Say, not just... Uh, you want to go in water project, you don't have way. Then you go to road project, you don't have way. Uh, you go to healthcare, you don't have way. So none of these things are equipped or even done to the maximum benefit of the people. So what is just said, there is no governance in that. Because governance is all about self-delivery. Uh, I self-delivery, not just delivery. People must have seen it, that it is happening, and of course, when they go to that particular thing, they say it. If that's exactly why if I have to report on a particular project, I have to see it. I have to see it. I have to show my camera to that. I have to build a camera lens to that particular place. So as when I am reporting, I am reporting from the point of view of the market to, see, to show them that this is exactly what's happening. It's very important. I would like you to throw that question to the masses to see if they actually affiliate with your thoughts on the kind of leadership that works best for them. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you. Thank you. Oji, what will be your final argument? Well, I'll... <laughs> When I'm saying what I'm saying, right, I, I was talking about um, implementations, right? It's, it's not about doing so many things at the same time. But if you are fast enough to do so many things at the same time, if the funds are available, because that's actually the, the, the jinx there, right? One of the factors is the funds being available to implement, th implement this, these infrastructures, right? So if the funds are available to implement these infrastructures and you can be fast with so many things at the same time, why do we have representatives and have commissioners and all that? You have ministers. They are, they are there for all that the policies of the, the, the government, the governors, to be moving on smoothly, right? So <laughs> everybody needs to be working. You, you don't just do health and Wait, when you're doing health, and I come to uh, um, 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 roads, walks, or when you're done with walks, and I come to this and that, right? So everything can simultaneously work, 
hand in hand. So that's what I mean by, you know, being fast and sprinting in governance. The main thing is the funds. If the funds are made available, the funds are available, everything works hand in hand. All right, so hand in hand. We'd also like to know your views on that. You can engage with us. And of course, we'll air those views on the morning show tomorrow as Emmanuel is going to proceed to ask Avia residents what they think about these two leadership styles. Up next, we do have a report from Imo State. You do know that the off-season elections are scheduled to hold on November 11th. But so far, there's been reported cases of voter apathy, according to the NOA in Imo State. People not wanting to come out to vote, mostly as a result of what they witnessed during the elections, the previous elections, of course, at the national and other southeastern states. Let's hear from the people of Imo State. John Kennedy has a report. The level of voter apathy in Imo State has become a growing concern as the state gears up for the upcoming gubernatorial election come November 11. With democracy itself questioned, Africa correspondent Obona John Kennedy was out to assess the readiness of people to participate in the electoral process. He spoke to several individuals to gouge their sentiments on this matter. Honestly speaking, I will not even bother myself coming to vote. I have my PVC, it's intact with me, but I will not vote. That is just the truth. The reason is that um, I am highly disappointed with what is happening in Nigeria. The way things are going, and even the election. And in the last election, what the INEC promised us is not what INEC did. Uh, so. I was highly disappointed. Uh, this coming election, people are going to vote. I just think it should just tell us who they want to just announce the selected person they have chosen for this uh, coming election. And you know, we just go with it because I'm not sure that election goes in Nigeria. Selection. So, definitely. So, why are you going to waste my time? I wish to do more productive things. I'm not voting. I'm not voting. Do I have that stand? I'm not with I'm not interested at all. So whosoever that wants to sit on this seat, go ahead and As we can see, there is a prevalent sense of voter apathy among the residents. Many feel disenchanted with the political landscape and believe that their votes may have little impact on the outcome. However, we also found individuals who are determined to exercise their democratic rights and make a difference. A lot of my have been going on have impacted in some of the campaigns. I'm fully sure that I will be a voter. I will vote in this campaign. I will go out and cast my vote to my own candidate. Concerning the forthcoming election by November, I will be voting. Though you know what the outcome has been so far, I will see good because it's my right. My franchise, so I will see by her that to the good. We hope that perhaps in this time things should be gotten right. So, and I'm using this opportunity to advise others to not relent on your right, go out and vote because it's your right. Uh, you will say that votes don't count, but you don't know when it will be done right, so just do what you have to do as a citizen. It's your right. I'll leave the rest for them to handle. Thank you. Some are political persons. We are also asked about what can be done to make them vote for the upcoming gubernatorial election. And they had this to say. Now, there's nothing that can be done. Because uh, what would have given me hope and more assurance is the result of the previous one. And uh, it didn't go the way them themselves, I next promised. So what will be done now? Is it not that same promise they will come out and promise, promise, promise that uh, they will do this, they will do that? You hear those languages, glitches. You hear some of all those things. They, they say glitches. There is this and this and this. In 
what uh, gave us assurance they have Tesron and Tesron that he doesn't have problem that is perfect, this and that and that. And billions of naira was pushed into that uh, this. But at the end of the day, so as it is now, I don't think is there anything they will do now. It's only promise. I've lost hope in Nigeria. <laughs> there is no point. Uh, the, we, we thought with the whole PIVAS uh, uh, issue and all that, that the previous election was going to be any better. The promise is so. Even if I say they will do this this way, they will do that this way, he will not do it. Uh, I think except there's a change in leadership. All those people here, I don't know what, how it's going to be done, but I think that will make this all wiped out. I, I don't even know if the new people that we even imagine will still the same, make the same mistakes we make. So I think in Nigeria, I'm just trying to source for myself and uh, provide and try and do all I can to provide for my needs and take care of myself. But nobody, the government is already, it's not, doesn't care about me or anything. So apart from the air we breathe, that we don't pay for that. Thank God who gave us for free. <laughs> Every other thing, Nigerians work their ass out to provide for themselves. So. It is evident that Imo State is facing a significant challenge in overcoming voter apathy. However, there is a glimmer of hope as some individuals are actively taking steps to be informed and participate in the upcoming gubernatorial election. As the election in Imo State approaches, it is crucial for political leaders, civil society organizations, and citizens to work together to address the concerns that have contributed to voter apathy. Voter education campaigns, town hall meetings, and debates should be organized to engage residents and provide them with a platform to voice their concerns and expectations from the electoral body. These efforts will also help to restore the faith in the democratic process and motivate the residents to exercise their voting power. I wonder John Kennedy, corresponding from Oweri for Afia TV. Yeah, at this point in time, INEC has an uphill task before them. Oji, what's your reaction to that? Well, this is literally what they want it to be, right? You don't go out there to get your PVCs and vote, so it could enable, you know, bridging and all that. But the truth is that you have to go out and get your PVC and vote because at least there's a case. Let me take um, the last elections, general elections, uh, as a case study, right? Assuming people didn't come out in their numbers to vote, there won't be any tribunal or any, uh, making any case and all that. So there's a reason why these things have just come out and vote first, right? Then there's a case if there's a rigging. Or, uh, so the voter apathy is, is, is a very wrong thing to be thinking about at this point in time. People need to go out and support themselves because this is ours, right? We're not doing it for anybody. If we, if you don't take your PVCs and go out there and vote and they elect a bad leader, right? Who is it going to, it's gonna, the effects on, on all of us, on all the emo lights and all that, right? You just have to go out there and make sure you vote. Then when we are done voting, if there's a case, they will solve it. It's, it's a very critical one. Now the S that one of the respondents added, changing election, to selection. She said they should go ahead and select who they want to be governor. We do not need that S. What we do in fact need is a proper, free, fair, credible election. And it's important that INEC understands the task before them because trust lost is indeed very difficult to regain. But we do hope that the NOA and other civil service organizations will be able to work with the electoral umpire to restore the trust of Imo State residents as we prepare for the off-season elections come November 11th. That was John Kennedy Obona, our Imo State Bureau Chief, telling us the tide of the residents and of course electorates in Imo State ahead of the elections. We'll go on a quick break and when we return, we're we'll talking about what OG earlier cited, the high drug abuse rate in Enugu State, and our guests will be telling us evidence-based methods to tackle this surging rate of drug abuse. Yes, you're watching Afia Morning Show. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to the show. At this point in time, we're talking about something that is not isolated anymore as we're witnessing a rise in the number of people that are engaging in drug abuse in Enugu State. We've heard about so much fentanyl, 
Uru Miri, and even worse, cocaine addiction and even addiction to other painkillers. This is destroying our youth, it's destroying our society, it's destroying Nigeria as a whole. And today we want to have a progressive discussion, a progressive conversation about how we can tackle this spate of drug abuse beginning from Inigo State. We do have the executive director of Leaf Free Renewal Center in the person of Mr. David Folarami to tell us some of these evidence-based methods of trying to salvage the situation and ensure our youth do not go into a life of regret, crime, and addiction. Thank you for joining us on the show. Good morning, welcome. Yeah. I'll start with a rather personal question. According to your bio, you are described by your friends as a peculiar man. Yeah. Why so? Um, okay, because uh, I struggled with drug use for seven years. I struggled with drug addiction for seven years. And then um, I've been able to come out of it. And I've dedicated most of my life to helping others to come out of active drug use and addiction. So uh, at an event where I was speaking with some of the beneficiaries of our work, somebody just said, that's really peculiar. And then the peculiar man stuck. So basically, that's it. So permit me to go a little bit deeper. Please, please do. What, what, what led you into that life? When did you become hooked on the medication? Tell us about that time of your life. And most importantly, how you were able to get out of it. OK. Um, in. Uh, 2010, I went to the UK for my master's. Uh, so I shared an apartment with two Europeans, and uh, these ones were always uh, using drugs in the apartment. So that was actually my f the real exposure I had to drug use. And um, I didn't have that resilience built in me to be able to say no. So when that pressure was so much, I eventually caved in and started experimenting with uh, substances like ketamine, marijuana, mushrooms, etc. Go back to Nigeria, and uh, a friend introduced me to crack cocaine, and then it just went downhill. You know, it became full-blown addiction, and uh, it was it was a lot. You know, my family suffered, I suffered, I lost so much money, I lost, I almost lost my life. You know, at the end of the day, but um, after seven years of this, uh, I attempted suicide because it got to a stage where I couldn't fight this addiction anymore and uh, I, I got out of that situation with uh, new resilience to be able to say no to these things and I think most importantly there's the God factor you know God just helped me to come out of it and uh, yeah that's what happened you are yeah. a really strong success story there's something I want to ask right what actually led or because uh, sometimes um, people be like, uh, was loneliness, they are broken, or some factor or issue is the reason why they got hooked, right? Yeah. What was that at that point in time that made you be like, you know what, I'm doing this, right? Uh, I'm just going to do this. Did anything trigger you at that point in time to get hooked on this? Uh, okay, this is part of what I wanted to talk about when we were talking about the risk factors. Uh, in my own case, I wasn't lonely. Uh, I, I had, I was okay with my family. I was okay with school. I, I think it was just that pressure, pressure, and then the inability to say no, the lack of assertiveness. You know, to be able to stand my ground because it didn't just start the first day they offered it to me. You know, it was a day in day out thing, ah, David, why don't you try it? Oh, David, why don't you try it? Okay, let's go to the club, let's try it, let's try it. And I kept saying no until some point, like couldn't I said, no. when I came in and I couldn't say no anymore. So it's just that lack of an ability to say no when the pressure came. You know, you are a survivor. Like I said, you are a strong success story. And I see that peer pressure had a huge role to play in you getting hooked. Yeah. So I'd like to talk about when you knew that you were hooked on this, let's use ketamine as a case study. What do you feel, what pull did you feel that made you keep going back for more? How did it affect your social life? Okay, um, I used ketamine socially, right? So I don't think there was any point in time where I could actually say I was hooked on ketamine. However, like I said, I came to Nigeria for a family function and a friend introduced me to crack cocaine. So almost immediately I knew I was hooked because I started spending outrageous sums of money on the drug. Uh, in, in six months, in five months, I spent in excess of three million naira on crack cocaine. And then I started selling property, sold a car, 
you know, uh, sublet my house, then started living in the trap houses, what we call the bunks, mm. where drugs are sold and you just live there with other active users. So at that point, I knew I was in trouble because that was not me. That's not how I was brought up. I was brought up in a Christian home, very great family values, you know, and then now I was living in a trap house with other people who were doing drugs. So I knew there was a problem at that time. All right. So in any good state, mm. let's shift a little bit to what youths and even older people are facing. Mm. What is your understanding of the state of drug abuse in any good state? Uh, there's an increase. There's, the prevalence is high. Uh, there was a research done a few months ago by another media outlet that said uh, in terms of cocaine use, Enugu was number four. In Nigeria? In the, yes, in Nigeria. And that's high. That's very high. I'll give you a story very quickly. I hope I have the time. One day I was sleeping with my family and then I had those, a lot of rancor outside. It was about 2 a.m. So I come out to find out what was happening. And we found out that a 16-year-old girl had taken her mother's car from church, took it to a drug house dropped it as collateral for cocaine. In Enugu State? Yes. Mm. So unknown to her, the mother had a tracker on the car, and then the mother had now come, tracked the car to that location with policemen, and there was this uh, rancor and shootout yeah. and all of that. So it's increasing. We now have uh, secondary school students who use impurimiri, like you said, as crystal methamphetamine. Crack cocaine is on the increase in Enugu State. Uh, powder form of cocaine is on the increase in the Ningu state. And it's not just, a lot of people think this is uh, just for the men. No, we have cases of ladies, young Look, girls. Funny, funny enough, uh, there was a story uh, one um, police guy told me, right? It was like whenever, these days, whenever the, they want to do a, a stop and search, probably, you know, some, you know how psyche and they see people and think, oh, probably this guy might have something mm. or that, mm. they, they search, you mm. know that. They, search more of women yeah. these days because they are the ones indulging more, yeah. right? Because it's even funny, <laughs> like you, you, you go online, you see them use drugs like mm. it's a normal thing. Yeah. Women use drugs like smoke these things and they feel cool with it, right? Yeah. So It's not just normalized anymore, it's now glamorized. It makes you feel like if you're not doing it, you are the weirdo. And this is going to bring us to picking and choosing role models. Definitely, definitely. Definitely. You know, there is something that I want to talk about, and I understand that when someone starts to abuse drugs, usually there is an experience that the person goes through, perhaps a loss somewhat, that jolts the person out of that mind space. Because what the drug makes you believe is that everyone else is the enemy. Mm -hmm. I've watched enough documentaries about this to understand. Mm -hmm and also experiencing how people go through this because I also schooled in Nigeria. So what was that thing that caused the paradigm shift for you that made you snap out of it and come back to the person you are today? Uh, for me, it was, you know, I've caused people so much pain. We don't have the time for me to go through my entire story. I've caused people so much pain. The, the person I was brought up the way I was brought up was a total different person I had become, you know. So it got to a point where I wasn't even trying to stop for myself anymore because at that time I was not just hooked, I was not just addicted, I was dependent on these substances. At this point, I wasn't trying to stop for myself anymore. I was doing it for my family. I was doing it for the church. I was doing it for people who believed in me. You know, so that was the paradigm shift. My, my, I, I would be in the trap houses, my mom would come to look for me, you know, I'll be all messed up, no clothes on, I'd sold everything I had, wearing different legs of slippers, you know, and you'll see her cry, you'll see her suffer the pain that I'm going through. And I think at that point, I just knew that I had to do it for, if I wasn't going to do it for myself, I was going to do it for, for them. Your friends? Yeah. The ones that you had to do this with at the time, mm -hmm. have you heard from them lately? Four are dead. Four, I lost four. Three um, to drug overdoses, one to uh, a motor accident that took her life. So, um, yeah, some of them are still active users. Some of them have seen the change in my life and the work that I'm doing now in helping others come out because uh, it's the evidences of what we're doing is clear for people to see. So some will say, if David can come out of it, then I also can come out. You know, some people call me the voice of recovery because... <laughs> Natalie, you can't even imagine some of the things I did when I was doing drugs. So 
people will say, if David can come out, I go back to these trap houses, to these bunks, and then people see me who were using when I was there, and they're happy to see me, and they're happy to want to come out. So some have been able to, some are still hooked. We're still um, talking to them, still hoping, still praying that uh, they would also have that paradigm shift and be able to snap out of it and come out. Thank you so much for sharing your You're story. Welcome. Yeah. And I believe there's no one else that is in a better position to tell us how to tackle this. Because you are a survivor, you're here today telling your story because you've owned it and you've decided that it's time to help other people. And I assume that is why you've started this renewal center. Yeah. So these evidence-based methods that we're talking about, let's delve into them. How can we start to help and reach down into this hole, the depths of this well, to pull some of these people out, as many as we can. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, prevention, if there's ever a scenario where the statement prevention is better than cure, it's in drug abuse. It takes you less money, less time, less energy to create an intervention for prevention and trying to cure the disease of drug addiction. It's almost impossible, that's the truth. You can only manage the situation. Now, uh, evidence-based prevention methods are methods to stop you know, uh, the adolescents from getting into drug use or to stop them from getting, if they've started already, stop them from getting into a stage of dependence, right? Uh, we'll start with the family. The family unit is very important. I always tell people, I see hundreds of cases, and then most of the time I can trace the drug use or addiction back to the family. Are there values, are there systems in place that, uh, are there, is the family uh, drug abuse, have they created a drug abuse prevention culture within them? How involved is the family with every single person you know, so that's the first thing. The family plays a very, very important role. Number two, which is close, very close to the family point, is the parenting. How much of drug abuse prevention education is being carried out by our parents? Most parents delegate these responsibilities to the schools, to the churches. We're not saying the schools and the churches shouldn't do this, because I'm coming to them. But then the primary responsibility of parents is to nip this in the bud, or to even stop it from happening. So when they can't do this effectively, you find out that, I always say, tell your children the truth about drugs before others tell them lies about it. Because they will go out there, socialization, people will tell them things. Use this drug, is going to make you assimilate more, it's going to make you sing more, it's going to make you understand much more. They are all lies. But then the parents have to be the ones to first tell them in their homes. Also, parents should not be enablers. So parents are enablers of drug use. How? You have alcohol lying down in the house. You have Hennessy in your cupboard. You have this in that. The, yeah. Yes, and then your parents, your children are watching you. They are imbibing some of these things you're doing. They are going to copy it, maybe not in your front, but when they go out there, they'll copy it and sometimes they get hooked. I've seen a lot of people who, I don't know if I can quickly share this story. I was speaking to a school, in, in a school, and then I was speaking to young girls. A 13 year old, a girl came out to me and said, sir, I need to talk to you because I've not been able to share this with anybody. And I said, what's the problem? She said, two years ago, I started drinking. When I saw her, I guessed, I was trying to guess her age, and I felt she was like 16. Two years ago, I started drinking. After drinking, I started using marijuana. After using marijuana, now I'm using cocaine. And now I can't do without it. And I asked her how old she is, and she said she's 11. So she started using at nine. And I asked her, how did you start using it? She said she saw a bottle of rum in her father's room. So you see that parents have the biggest role to play in actually curbing uh, the issue of drug abuse. Number three, we come to uh, community-based interventions. They say it takes a village to raise a child. Sometimes, as community members, we need to be observant. There are spots in our communities where we know that illegal trafficking of drugs is being carried out. We need to speak out. We can't just keep quiet and let it be and say, it doesn't affect me, it doesn't affect my child. No. You don't know the person's child is going to affect, and that child is going to relate to your child. You know, so we all have a role to play in the community to ensure that these things are kicked out. Number four, we talk about um, the school-based prevention. How drug-proof are our schools? I was going to a school to speak to their students. The taxi man I was in, the bull driver, as soon as I was getting there, the guy said, ah, Oga, this school, they, 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 they take drugs well. That's a taxi driver. 
that already knows that this particular school they do drugs there that means that school is open to drug use the school is not doing enough to safeguard its children how what are the intervention methods that the teachers the counselors people who are in the school are putting in place to make sure that their children aren't using drugs it's also very important and finally the fifth point in the intervention is our religious leaders they have a big role to play because i found out that most times more often than not young people will reach out to their pastors their teenage teachers their youth leaders in church with certain issues like this even before they talk to their parents or other people so if these religious leaders are none the wiser they don't know what to do then they've thrown those young ones back to the wolves you know so it's important that these five measures are put in place to ensure we prevent drug use among the adolescents in our society thank you so much You're for welcome. sharing your story and truly evidence-based methods because everything you've said you've brought us a story that you show that this is actually going to work thank you so much You're Mr. David, for joining us thank you very much i would like to refer to him not as the executive director of live free renewal center but as a survivor that should be the first thing in your portfolio because you lived through something that claimed three of your friends three dead you are truly a survivor thank you for coming on the You're welcome. show today thank you very much for having me thank you Cheers. We'll go on a quick break. Stay with us. Afia Radio 99.3 FM is finally live. No more test transmission. Mm. We've gone live, telling yes. the story to the Southeast and even beyond the Southeast. As even when it on Saturday, Afia Radio was live on DSTV channel 254 and Go TV channel 17, a radio that goes beyond regional borders. Can you believe that? Can you beat that? We do have the programs manager of Afia Radio 99.3 FM, Mr. Uchenna Iboeme, fondly called Dickin, in the studio to tell us Igwe, about prospects Igwe, Igwe for business promotion. Igwe Dickin, <laughs> welcome. Good to have you guys. Good to be with you. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> no, I just came up from, from the radio the studio. The morning show. So. <laughs> so, I mean, first of all, yeah. you held down the show on Saturday. You presented hours and hours and hours. Tell us about that before we head to prospects. Well, funny enough, <laughs> it's um, it's 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 a great feeling for me, yeah, because um, this this is the first time in my career that I did a simulcast, I mean, presented on radio and on TV at the same time. And in fact, I was actually thinking, I said, I'm actually the first to do this yeah. in the entire Southeast. That, that, so kudos to me. <laughs> and all for seven good hours. Seven started hours. talking from 3 p.m. down till um, 8:58 p.m. when I handed over to Ifnaya on um, on, on um, uh, news Easy, tonight. Yeah. So I, it, it's a great feeling and a thing of joy. I'm happy that Afia um, is making this, creating this record, making this history. I'm happy that I am part of this vision. I'm happy that we are we are finally getting there. Over time, we'll be clamoring to have something, you know, that can tell our story. Afia is here to tell the story. Kudos to the TV arm of um, the brand uh, that um, I've also done a great job in trying to tell the Alibo story, project the, the East, project Alibo to the world. Now it's time for us to also do do same with um, the radio. So that's it. So Afia Radio 99.3 is being launched and launched already and is kicking already it really did a morning show this morning so now what's next <laughs> well that's we're, the question we're open for business mm. i'm here too i'm, I'm a market man as you can see yeah, i'm no, a market no, no, man yeah. you see i came out with my with my shirt I feel I'm, like I'm ready to run you see I'm, <laughs> i am ready for everything and we're open for business this is just to tell you that we are open all right we are here to create platform for businesses we're here to create platform for um, the entertainment industry, um, the, uh, uh, um, the art and culture, tourism, everything, all right? Afia is for everyone. We are, the we are here to bridge the gap between the high, the mighty, the low. So, like I said this morning on the morning show, whatever you have, bring it on. No matter where the issues, issues are happening, are coming up from, we are here to attend to it. We're not going to discriminate, and nobody's going to shut us up to say, no, don't talk. No matter what it is, I'll follow it up to the letter, and that's what AFIA stands for. When people want to promote their businesses, they look at the prospects, coverage, and the reach. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the coverage and reach of AFIA Radio. Okay, so this morning, I received a call from Abia State. I got a call from Anambra State. Um, on Saturday, I got a call from a boy state. I got a, a call from Lokoja. All right. Um, those who called from Abuja and um, Lagos and Bayelsa, I know they were watching on TV. All right, but this is to tell you. How? So I can say, confidently say that, at least to some extent, the whole of Southeast is covered. 
to some extent. From Osoka, you can get us. Donoka can get us. Tune into 99.3 if you're watching me right now and confirm everything I'm telling you. So, um, in there, but we are very clear. We've done these things and we are, we've seen that. See, in fact, Afia So, we're, we're, we're ready for that. All right. Okay. Um, the vision and the mission statement definitely somehow, some sort of have actually touched one or two things from, from me, right? So, right now, I, I, I want to let's bridge a gap, right? And understand what really the feel of Afia Radio is going to be like. Sound like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, but, but, but just to like let people, you know, understand really what this kind of radio is. It is. It was. It was. It went crazy. People seeing visual radio, right? And definitely, some of our programs are going to be live, too. going live yes, from radio to TV. TV. So right now, bridging that gap and also understanding the 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 age and 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 and, and people targeting. We are targeting already to get on board and. Definitely, this, these are how the businesses are going to, you know, some months and all that. So, can we talk about that? Our um, our target audience is between 18 to 47. All right. Um, we also we also cater for those who are beyond them, this age bracket. All right. But these are mainly the target audience. And also, Afia is a grass, grassroots station. Um, we are not so funky. We are not also very, very, we are local, we are grassrooted, but we are not so, so, all right? So we can function anywhere. That's Afia, that's, that's, that's who we are. Um, we are not um, a core 100% music station. We're okay? waiting for the community. So, exactly. Afia is for the community. See, Afia, we are, we are not a core music station. At the same time, we are not a core talk station. or a mix of both. So I would say, I would say 60 40, all right? Because the talk, we need to have the talk to cater the, for the needs of people. We need to have the talk to bridge some of these gaps, all right? Then the music, we also need to have it because people don't want, a lot of people don't want um, any talk, more especially the, 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 the Gen Zs. Gen Zs yeah. uh, they don't want to, you know, just tune into really, and I mean, and this is also what I've also brought us to where we are right now. I mean, the reception Indianuga has also given us in this past couple of months, uh, two months plus, um, is, is encouraging, I must say. 18 to 47, why this very specific age range? What, what makes Africa radio suitable for this demographic well the reason why we chose to go in this direction is because these are the people who are in fact I wouldn't want to call them f f funny enough we have the students all right they are the target we need to target them we need to catch them young then we have those who are already in the corporate sector who are doing business who are actively that, that's they say life starts at 40 yeah yeah so that's also when you have people who are actively you know engaging hustling we need to get them, we need to charge them up. Those who are in the art industry, those who are you know, doing different kinds of stuff, trying to you know, find themselves. We targeted them from 18, we'll follow you through this period, 47, knowing that from 18, probably you're about to, you're entering or you're coming out from school or you're about to round up, then from there we are following your process until you become probably a corporate person or a businessman. We're also following you to, you know, if you have the talents, as as a musician, as an actor, we are here to also provide that platform for you. So we are here to cater for everyone, okay? Young, um, aged, aged, mid aged, mid aged, all of them. Aged. We are here to cater for everyone. Okay, so businesses, we are here for business, mm. aren't we? <laughs> what do businesses stand to gain if they decide to work and showcase their businesses on our here Radio 99.3? I, I see. Listen, see, I'm proud. <laughs> I pride over the fact that Afia Radio is the number one. You know, I said on Saturday that we're the 19th radio station, and somebody said, ah, are you sure we're the 19th? I said, yes. Mm, yeah. I've done, I've, I, 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 I sat down, and I went through all the, I named all the radio stations in Enugu, both the ones in Osaka, the one in Ogo, and the ones in Enugu. Urban. Urban, yeah. We only have uh, uh, one community and two campus radio stations, uh, three campus radio stations act actively uh, functioning here in Enugu. It should have actually been 20 if it already was on, all right? But we we'll just have three um, campus and one community radio station, Tower FM, in Osaka. So when I say Afia is different, Afia is different because, listen, we're the first visual radio station. It means that everything we are doing, aside from listening, you can as well be watching us. So if you're bringing your business to us, imagine that I'm giving you a double. <laughs> just imagine it. Imagine that. You're, 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 you're bringing your product to a station that have this vast reach. Imagine that you're bringing your, station, your, your, your product to a station that, you know, have everyone, everybody's talking about Afia. So 
is also a double because we have a TV station. So you're bringing your product to me. You're not going to lose. We have to give you back. It will go beyond. It will go, we are giving extra. Yeah. We, are, we give you Jara. So actually, it's the best place for you to put your to bring, bring your business. Programming. Uh, uh, programming. What kind of programs are we expecting? Well, like I said, our, pro our content. Um, we have content that caters for many people. We discuss health, social, political issues. Um, we look at the grassroots issues, issues that concern the people. I feel it's people driven. I feel it's people driven. So anything that will better the life of Ngi Enugu, I feel I will delve into it. Be it your business, or be it your career, or be it your studies, be it education, be it health. We're going to delve into it. We have a lot. I just want people to know that Afia, um, I, let me borrow the word of um, the current governor of Enugu State. He said it's business unusual. So with Afia, it's also um, radio unusual, radio like never before. It's a unique radio. So bring it on. Let's, let's, let's deal. Let's deal. Radio unusual. I like the sound radio of that. Radio unusual, of course. So when it comes to the music, you, according to you, are expecting 60, 40. So that is, is it 60% music or 40% talk or 40% music, 60% talk? And what kind of music? Is there a certain kind of music that we're going to be listening to on Afia? Every kind yes. of music. Yes, <laughs> there, are, there is a, there's a certain kind of music, mm -hmm. all right? Um, Afia is strictly African. But in, in being African, we are... 90% Nigerian. In being Nigerian, we are, you know, 50% Easterner. So this means um, we're a talk and music station, all right? Well, the combination here, let me explain, let me break it down, is I talk, I sell, I dance. I talk, I dance, I talk, I sell. I don't know if you make sense for you. If you make sense for you. All right? I talk, yeah. I Four sell, I, say, Gary, Gary said I dance. Water. Yeah, anyhow you want I to dance, say it. It's making sense. I sell, I talk. So this is, this is, so it means the more you're also okay, enjoying the talk, yeah. the more you're enjoying the music. There will never be a time where you just ha let, hear us talk for straight one hour, straight 30 minutes, straight 15 minutes. No, it's not going to happen. We will talk, we will dance, we will sell, we will come back to talk. That's our pattern. Then, um, um, why we devoted the 50% uh, to um, Eastern songs, even if you are a Jidenna who's, in a, who's based in US or UK or Canada, wherever you are, or Germany or Europe, um, the idea is that as far as you are an Igbo man, we have to promote your culture. So if you're a Jidenna or if you're a Kelechi featuring a Jay-Z, because you're a Kelechi first featuring a Jay-Z, who play your clay, but you not you never hear a foreign song on Afia. Sorry, I'm sorry to break hearts, yeah. Um, that's um, <laughs> he's a child of the library, so he knows what, what we're talking about. This is this is vision. You will never hear us um, playing um, a selling on the Dion on Afia. Like I said, Afia is African. Afia is Afia is local. I was going to ask you why selling Dion, what? but let's also talk about Oji. Oji yeah. is you're the production manager of Afia Radio 99.3 FM, and while of course with the viewers along myself we do hope that's not going to affect your morning show participation <laughs> but what is your what are we going to expect from you being a production manager you worked on the bed for the the launch of the radio on saturday what more are we expecting what kind of productions and technicalities are we expecting well productions and technicalities are already been um, seen already because of most of all the, the musicals and all that's rotation right and the right songs to play and most especially they're all brand new songs, right? So we are brand new songs driven and also go way, in, way, way back in time too. So all these things are, 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 are all put in place to make sure that you have the feel of the radio. It's a radio that, 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 that happens to deal with your feel, how you feel mm -hmm. every day. You listen to that radio station. I don't know how it is going to work, but it's working, right? You listen to the radio. It gives you the feel of how you're feeling. And that's something we put into consideration, trying to select all these songs we select and all that stuff. And, we'll play and, according you know, to the mood. Yeah, according, according to the mood. To like according to the mood. You, you, would, you, would, you would think it's a joke, right? But when you listen to our radio station, any how you're feeling, that's what we're playing. I don't know how it works, but it's working. Do you, do you know someone told me, mm. let me say this on there. Someone told me, I won't call the name of the station. But the person said, I no longer listen to this station. Yes, they are known for this, but I no longer listen to them because you guys are more current. You guys are more, you guys, you, you play something we want to hear, we play something we want to listen to. All right, this, is, this was during our test transmission. 
all right? And we've done survey. We've gone into the market. We've gone into the street to ask questions. And I say, you know, you know what? This station, this is. So, Afia man, a room here. Yes. We are Afia. We are a good business. We are a good market. We are selling ourselves. All right. On socials, I forgot to say that Afia is also social media, social media driven, and this means we are big on socials. All right. We'll be streaming live on YouTube. So anytime you can, if you can't watch us live on DST, on Afia TV, DST TV channel 254 and Go TV channel, channel 17, 17 yeah. you can as well watch us on, on YouTube. That you know, a, a provision is being made for us to stream all our programs live. This is no longer, no, we'll, we'll cut some and do some. Yeah. All our programs are going to be live on YouTube. Okay, so on a summary note, one of our guests, uh, a media mogul himself, Sami Adrian Ajufo, said that he hopes that he knows that Apia Radio is going to be a success because he believes that we have observed other radio stations and we're going to learn from mistakes that have been made. What is Apia Radio 99.3 FM going to do differently? So here's the thing. You know, I also started my career here in Enugu. Yes, in 2012. And uh, I've been in Enugu. I've worked in Enugu. I understand the media terrain in Enugu. I can tell you for sure what the Enugu wants. I've also pioneered the second station I'm pioneering in Enugu. All right? Uh, five years ago, I pioneered this station, and I can boast and say this is where we brought it. And today, we've also started another one. And um, the thing we're going to do differently is do what others are not doing. I don't want to begin to give you a snippet because all that, I mean, I'm in mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean business to compete. If I give you my strategy, it's a problem. So, but we're going to do diff things differently because um, people have been neglect neglected. The essence of radio is to bridge gaps. But, but over time, not done this, all right? So people have been neglected. Um, we are also going to, we are taking radio back to them. This is their radio. We are just pioneers. We are just, we are just drivers driving. And that's why this morning on the show, I said, Wherever you are having, wherever you are, whatever the issues are, please bring them on. And Natalie, I can, I can tell you that the phone up, the, 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 the WhatsApp line in the studio, I'm already getting messages. People are already giving me issues happening around their areas. And this is what Affair is all about. What do I do next? I'll have to go down or probably send the team down to that place to look at it. Because we're about fact and figures too. We look at it and, you know, take it up from there. So Afia is here to give the voiceless the voice. I like the sound of that. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Uche Nabweme Dike, oh, yeah, programs manager it. from the breakdown. Oh yeah, but that's it. Programs manager, oh yeah, but the main thing. Oh, yeah, programs main manager, <laughs> Afia Radio 99.3 FM. And if you think he didn't say anything that you agree with, take a listen to Afia Radio right now. Can we I tell them to follow me on social media? Follow on social Please. media as well at Afia Radio 99.3. Afia 99.3 FM. Leave out the points. 993 FM. Afia 993 FM. And we're going to have that on screen till the end of the show so that you can touch that follow button and of course you're going to engage with all the programs and Dickin has promised everything would be streamed live so if you are a business owner imagine the prospect your product would not just be seen or heard on radio it would also be seen on TV sometimes on YouTube and even on Facebook you don't want to miss it we'll go on a quick break and when we return we'll have some live with us for social media trends stay tuned when it's just close to 10 o'clock, you do know that it's time for social media trends. As usual, we have some uh, live. And also, a little surprise, Divine is also back. You're going to be seeing her subsequently, maybe next week. I don't know. But yes, we just received a very pleasant surprise during the last break. But Summer is here sitting pretty, looking beautiful <laughs> in grey. And thank cute, you. as usual, oh, with thank her you up so. bun and everything looking so dashing. <laughs> thank you, so You are trending much. today, first and foremost. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. Thank you. Uh, you, you know, I, I, I don't know. Bombastic one. You, uh, bombastic one. You too. You're looking fine. Yeah, Let's compliment him. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> compliment him. All eyes on summer. Uh, Thank you so summer much. Summer is a day. I am so excited. I don't know. The whole, you no, know, the radio coming in hot. Like, I've been so pumped. You no, know, I told you that time yeah. you asked me about it. I've been anticipating. And finally, it's here. So that's part of why I'm like so pumped. And I can't wait to just, you know, for people to see what Afia Radio is all about. I'm yeah, so happy sure. to be here. Thank you for having me. All right. So I'm going to go straight into what we have for you today. And it's actually just a very simple tweet that a guy made. And he basically said that imagine collecting money from your parents at 23. If they can show it, you'll see it. He said, imagine collecting money from your parents at 23. What happened to shame? So that simple and short tweet 
caused a lot of buzz. Like people were like, hey, who is this guy? Some people were like, ah, it's okay now. Some people were like, I beg you, leave us. So let's take a look at the comments before we get into your thoughts, because I'm very curious to see, to know what you have to think about that. So the person, this person said, oh, rich kid, even if I'm 35 and my parents are stinkingly rich, I go still day, be, I go still day their payroll. See, my parents know they complain. Wait and be your own. Say, I'm shameless there. I'll keep collecting. T for thanks. Now, who get parents? They collect money. You. And this is why a lot of young gains rush out out the house, rush to make hasty decisions, and end up making brutal mistakes that could potentially ruin their lives. If you're reading this comment, if you're reading this comment, read it well, word for word. Do not let anyone born of a mother pressure you, run your own race, and focus on your craft. If, I'm, if my child at 50, if my child is 50 and I have to give him or her, why not? This is what Chinna Z said. Official J said, now my parents sub for me where I take see this post to. So what are you talking about now, your shame? So I'd like to know what you think. I mean, pressure this person is coming for wetter. Yeah, the pressure is getting wetter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, it's for uh, it's the pressure. Pressure. Yeah. And um, also not taking processes into consideration again mm. growing up, right? Everybody wants to be 18 years old or 20, you want to be richer than Dangote or mm. some sort, something, you know, tap to that, right? And it does the, the thing enabling so many vices in the, in the society at this point in time. And we have to start talking about these things because we're not paying attention to that. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to head to the HK mm. and make a lot of money, right? So, I think at that age, mm. you know, at a certain age, 23, you should start to see it as, I would say, assistance as build, opposed to an entitlement. You yourself, mm. right? Yes, okay. because when okay. your parents send you money, this weekend I saw a friend of mine post a screenshot on Instagram of her dad. I think he sent her money, though she blocked the yeah, amount. But she was like, thank you so much, dad. So you should be super grateful. Mm. But you shouldn't now decide not to ask your parents for money at that age mm. if you're troubled. Okay. Because if you don't and you go to the wrong place to look for money, if you your ask, parents would still not be proud parents, of you, so it's important, yeah. but to ask? you have to ask your parents, but don't see it as an entitlement. We'll go on uh, streets of Enugu right now, we just received feed that man on the street is ready, so we're going to find out how residents are feeling about Monday, and if they do feel safe coming out on this day. Man on the streets with Gospel Promise is up next. Welcome to a new week of broadcast, like Natalie will always say. Yes, I hope you had a very, very splendid weekend. For me, uh, it was a very hectic one. But then, what can a man do? We're out here again this morning. Yes, we're here at the popular honor oh, tour, rather, um, Mbankiti Junction, here in the cool city of Enugu. And we're here, today is Monday, we want to know, if the residents are yet safe, do they feel safe now coming out on Mondays? And um, if, as you can see from the camera... Welcome back to the show. We do apologize for the technical challenge that we did have with Man on the Streets, but we'll still try to reconnect with Gospel once the technical challenge is solved. But let's not forget, we still have Summer here for social media trends. Go ahead, Summer. Oh. The beautiful Summer. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go back to the story and just tell you like ask you something this kind of thing is still concerning if you can collect money from your parents when you're 23 do you think that age and um, gender too can also be you know a form of pressure because i know a lot of like guys like my friends who are guys they feel this pressure like no now you're lucky now women people are lucky you, you, at 23 if you can still collect money from your dads and nobody will Persecute you, but us, oh, we need to hustle now. We got to hustle. I mean, do you think? I mean, Oji, thank God you're here, Mr. Oji. 23, we are yeah. meant to be out of school already, doing a service, and mm. where the if Nigerians um, 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 is working well, by yeah. then you're meant to definitely start working, mm. right? Well, 
if you're working, mm. fine, you're already making money for yourself, right? But if you don't have a job mm. <laughs> at that point in time, so where you're would still you... living under your parents. Yeah, it's living under your parents. So if living under your parents, who are going to be asking for the money and all that, right? So you want to definitely, so definitely have to make money. It's very important, right? But you have to follow the processes. Mm. Are you working already? No. You're living under your parents, yes. So who are you meant to be asking for the money? Your parents, right? Mm. So if you don't ask your parents for the money, how are you going to get the money? Exactly. You steal or what? Yeah, I have to ask you this, a personal mm. one. When did you stop collecting money from your parents? There was, even at this point in time, I still collect money from my parents. <laughs> Seriously? Yes. I, I love that. Just know, for real, they are, they, they, sometimes my mom would just want to like, just do a salaka, like, uh, she, make you yeah, still mothers, feel like a, mothers, yeah, so mothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even when your dad gives you something, your mom still wants to You still do business. Something. I do business with my parents too. It, it's some sort, somehow con collecting money from them because I could actually go do that business mm -hmm. with other people. Mm -hmm. They bring all those businesses with, to me too. So we do all, the, all those business and share, share the money. That's so we are somehow cool. connected somehow. But they have you ever decided and, to give your mom like a very heavy present? Perhaps like you've just made some money, I decided mm. to give your mom the same. Yeah, it do happens. And funny enough, she wouldn't even like she would feel bad about it. Like why are you spend a whole lot of money on uh -oh. this and all that and all that like it's honestly you're so sweet. not fix whatever <laughs> you need fix and all that, right? So that's basically it. Wow, that's Summer. beautiful. That's amazing. Mm. The second story I'm about to enter is concerning Burner Boy, you know, our own African giant. He made um, a statement on his Instagram story yesterday, and I don't know if we can show you the statement. He was saying that with the contract that has just come in and the money that has come in, it's like he's going to take a break from music. So, Natalie. I mean, a lot trending on social media. Mm -hmm. spot of time that's all we, we can, can take, take at this point and for Afia recommends definitely like some said at the beginning Afia radio is live do well to take a listen to Afia radio 99.3 FM when you head out today and do not forget to follow Afia radio 993 FM on socials and engage with us thank you so much beautiful cute summer oh, Oji, thank you what's our tip well our tip for this morning morning is tips on how to energize your week and have that flow starting from from the weekend and you know leading to the monday well if you sleep early you know you always wake up early trying to get some exercise and just to you know get your body working and your mental and Breakfast is very important, not the one they give to you when you're dating. <laughs> like, I mean, the breakfast is very important to have your breakfast. Wow. That meal is very important. So after that, just wear on you that, that, that positive mindset, that positive mindset, wear it on you, that positive mindset, and also move out and have a productive day. That's so easy. And somehow, somehow, your week is going to be so splendid and easy. Thank you. I mean, starting the week on that note, wow. I like the part about eating breakfast. Very important. You think food, I love coffee like me. I, it's actually rather bad. When you drink coffee, automatically you don't feel like, Ooh. yes, you feel, do you drink coffee as well? I so don't, I, I drink you, tea so I can. Okay, tea too has yeah. that effect. Yeah. So if you don't feel the hunger pang, but then later, around 10, 11, mm. that's yeah. when you know. Well, you can have your brunch by then, just have a light brunch, like, waiting for a wait for for lunch. But people, people still, it, breakfast is, people still see it as a compromise, compromise sometimes. They still think that they have to, okay, you can skip breakfast, eat lunch and dinner. So it takes us straight no, 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 no. to 111101011 or 001. Which meal plan yeah. works for you, Summer? Let's start with you. Mm. Meal plan. Me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, my appetite is terrible. That's probably why I'm also small. My mom is like, oh, I don't eat well. I need to do better. So this tip, the tip is yeah, I've done it to you, right? Shaking my table, mm. definitely. Oh, gee, what about you? Well, um, as a media personality, you know how it works coming to do shows in the very early in the morning. So you definitely breakfast is some, somehow some days skipped. Mm. Like you can just, you know, have some chew on stuff and just run off and all run that. Run off and then get on yeah. with your day. We do have our opening bell anchor in the studio, Namdi Ovanya. That will be telling us what is trending on the capital and the stock market. Namdi, good morning. Morning, how are you doing this morning? We're doing great. We're so excited for all that's to come this week. But today is also 9 11. Yes. How do you feel about that? I, well, what the day happened, I think I was in what, year two in that's university? 2001. 2001. Mm. So it, it's something I remember vividly. We watched it in school and, ah, uh, well. 
it's one of those things that's become part of history, but we live through it, and I think some people still have those scars, but we pray something like that never happens in Nigeria. Honestly, it's, 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 I remember watching it like twice, and each time I felt the same pain. But at the same time, when we're trying to review the dailies today, we, were, we saw that a lot of opinion leaders feel that lawmakers should be blamed. The Ninth National Assembly should be blamed for the discrepancies that caused the tribunal to vote, uh, uh, to basically throw out the petitions of Atiku and Obi. Who do you think should be blamed for the discrepancies and technicalities that were witnessed at the tribunal? Neighbors. There are three arms of government. One is for making laws, one is for interpreting laws, and one is for executing laws. The judiciary have the total responsibility to interpret the laws that have been made already. So trying to blame someone else is, is foolhardy, but you know, this is Nigeria. That is it. People have just said this is Nigeria. It's an unfortunate image to bear, but we hope that there is some kind of amendment to the Electoral Act, to the Constitution, to ensure that we do not witness this during do, the next election. Do we election. need amendments or do we just need to was already on ground? Right now, it's like it seems like a technicality because what is in the 2022 Electoral Act mm. is not what is in the Constitution. Yeah. And the judges base their verdict on the Constitution. And that is why they've called on Nigerians, opinion leaders have called on Nigerians to blame these lawmakers. Nah. But we might even start a tribunal if we continue nah. in this line. I, might, I will put the judges on trial. You don't do that. You are the interpreter of the law. This is not the Supreme Court where you question constitutionality. The job of an appeal court level, which this tribunal is, is to interpret And we didn't start from the high court. So the, the tribunal is the high court and the appeal court. Checking constitutionality is not their problem. It is if candidates are not happy, they go to the Supreme Court for that. So if they are saying that, like I said, it's the lazy man blaming his tools and his neighbors. So no. So on a final note, is it worth it? Do you think it's worth it that Obi and Atiku head to the Supreme Court on a final note? For their own reputations, they need to. Because if anything happens, if people don't take these results well, unless they go to the Supreme Court, it's easy to say, oh, they had plans to cause trouble, that's why they didn't go to the Supreme Court. So yes, they have to go to the Supreme Court. Let's test our justice system to the end, and then we'll know where we're going from there in Nigeria. Thank you so much, Namdi. And to you watching this, thank you for joining the show today. And do also stay tuned for Opening Bell. You can expect that Namdi will have a power-packed, action-packed monologue for you today. And let us know your thoughts on chances of Obi and Atiku at the Supreme Court. And if you think it's worth it that they head to the Supreme Court of Nigeria to seek an appeal over the tribunal's verdict about the February elections. Thank you once again for joining. I remain Nathalie Uku. And I remain Oji Kwachuku. Have a splendid Monday and a great week. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.